the time is over and uh, we can move to the next presentation. And hopefully the speaker <laughs> next presentation is uh, here. And this is uh, Hans Herr definitely here, Tom Strempel and Hans Gerd Grabe. And it's about semantic web modeling of risk system evolution concepts. So Hans Gerd, please the uh, floor is yours. Yes, I'm just looking, where is my, ah, yes. Share. It's good. No, the only question is, uh, what is this? So you see my slide? Yes. Okay, I don't see them, um, but I go to this one and the show. So it's better? Yes. Okay. So let's start. Let's close something here. <clears throat> the aim of this presentation is to discuss our ontological modeling of TRIS system evolution concepts based on the approaches of uh, the mentioned Nikolai Spakovsky, uh, his book in 2010, and the trends of engineering system evolution uh, 2018, short, I call it these, um, and for their own considerations. It is common work with my student, Tom Strempel. A first short overview at the very beginning, uh, the work fits into recent activities to model core TRIS concepts using modern semantic web means. We provide two kinds of result, a formally described cost-based body of notions and formal models of examples taken from the literature, both available in our GitHub repository and this presentation and conference paper in which the background and motivation of the modeling decisions are informally described in more detail. The theory of evolution of technical systems is one of the most prominent, but at the same time, most obscure and controversial parts of TRITS. Altschuler cites the ESCOF mechanism, which is widely used in management literature to justify his laws. The approach does not yet appear explicitly in Altschuler's book in 69. No structural thought is yet there given uh, to controlling the task. Just such an approach is only discussed in the last three chapters in Altschuler's book 79, but less as a theory in its own right than as a guide to the application of solution standards. This is reflected in Altschuler's subheadings in chapter seven. Their score serves as a paradigm, the laws as guardrails to ultimately formulate 10 standards as concrete methodological recommendations. In Altschuler's book in 1980, this is further strengthened in two consecutive chapters, Law is Law and the Family of Standards, whereby here laws and lifelines have changed their places in order of argumentation compared to the book one year before. The whole thing triggered a fulminate discussion among Altschuler's followers about the extent to which general laws of development, systemic approaches, and the concrete evolution of technical systems intertwine here. Goldowski in 83 um, can be seen as a certain synopsis of the discussion interrelation. Also here, two engineering experience rather than analytical deductive reasoning has guided the author's hand. 30 years later, these considerations have been taken up again in several works by Michael Rubin. The mainstream, however, took a different path and tried to derive various hierarchies of de development level laws, trends, lines of development, or even just patterns. The various authors certainly disagree on the quality of the arguments from the interplay of market and technological development. 
This is also the case, for example, in the Tese book certified by Matritz as standard teaching material, where the classical approach of market pull and technology push, which play a role in economically based innovation theories, are contrasted with the technology pull. Unfortunately, these approaches and thus the entire debate, which with its lofty goals of technology forecasting, are on the level of the innovation theories of the 1960s. The extensive illustrative material is of course a treasure. Nevertheless, the question remains how meaningful examples are about the greenness of a world viewed solely through green, green glasses. Another question is whether the narrow orientation of evolution concepts to the artifactual dimension of technical systems, as in the Tese book, is at all suitable for tracing technical evolution or only scratches its surface. Most influential technical breakthrough are essentially determined by new operational principles with a pervasive influence on artifactual technical systems from a variety of fields. This cannot be discussed here in detail, even if in Spakovsky's approach, such points play a prominent role. I refer to my earlier paper cited at this page. One of the fundamental questions is how to delimit classes of real world technical systems when investigating laws of evolution. The approach itself suggests that it is not about the 20 years of evolution of the green rusty car in front of Peter's house, um, but about an average line of average evolution of real world artifacts in a certain time horizon. The s curve approach somehow starts from questions of the marketability of new artifacts, but even here a multitude of questions of their mutation remain unanswered. What for example is a car? The average new single car that runs for about five years without serious repair, but then has to go to the garage more often. Do the operating conditions play a role? For example, as annual car in the vehicle fleet of a company or as leased car that is disposed of after the mentioned five years by a leasing provider or as private FICA acquired cheaply just after this time? Which infrastructure conditions influence the evolution of technical systems? Could the inadequate charging infrastructure and obscure charging concepts slow down the e-car evolution as you cannot simply drive into the filling station and refill the technical systems energy source in just a minute? Does the car focus make uh, any sense at all here? And is the energy source not in fact an energy store that is regularly filled and emptied according to the Tritz principle 19 of periodic action? You may object, oh, that is the upper system. Then what's about coevolution scenarios? None of the theoretical approaches that I'm aware of address such essential questions. Evolution trees, as developed in Spagowski's book, um, are an exciting alternative approach to these exemplary fragments. This approach can also be criticized in all the dimensions just mentioned, but the examples are at least more systematically developed in contrast to the Tese book. The connections in the conceptual system remain work here as well. The aim of our modeling for was to get some clarity into this conceptual world. This picture shows the basic approach. An evolution tree is a directed graph whose arrows describe a transformation of the technical system with the type of transformation indicated under the target node. In Spakowski's book, all examples are trees also evolutionary lines also converge in trimming, for example. The specificity of Spakovsky's trees is related to the constraints of the evolutionary concepts under consideration, which unfold from a certain route along a main line of development 
in which a basic functional principle and its technical unfolding are encoded and fixed for the respective perspective of observation. I can only cursorily discuss the modeling itself here. The evolution of technical systems is basically described by one of these 10 basic evolution patterns. Spakowski extracts largely from experience of the difference in the usefulness of its principles in practical inventive projects, these basic patterns. Each of these basic patterns is further refined into a sequence of modification subpatterns of graded intensity. And this conceptual toolkit, the basic evolution tree, is applied as a methodological basis to the systematization of real world technological development in the form of special evolution trees. <clears throat> unlike uh, unlike uh, in Tese book, a clear principle is proposed according to which technical systems are brought into an evolutionary context in such considerations. The basis of any such investigation is a sufficiently general elementary technical function. Only those sufficiently generalized technical systems are included in the investigation that realize this elementary technical function as an emergent function. I refer to this selection in the following as class of technical systems. Its elements are called objects. Each class of technical systems delimited on this basis is doubly contextualized by the choice of the elementary technical function and the degree of generality of the technical system under consideration. The delimitation should fulfill the following conditions. First, the, pro the objects span a tree-like structure which allows visual presentation of all basic known versions within the class of technical systems under examination. Second, the evolution tree is an organized set of objective evolution patterns based on the analysis of the evolution of many real technical systems. Hence, the construction of evolution trees suggests that an objective classification criterion is used. Third, every evolution pattern includes a set of generalized descriptions of transformations and transitions and may be illustrated by a transformation example of a specific technical object. Hence, the requirement of generality and specificity is satisfied. Fourth, Information presentation in the form of a tree-like structure allows a designer to see all the basic transformation versions simultaneously and to distinctly trace their structure. The availability of the basic tree allows foreseeing and all significant transformation versions, even if the information available on the versions of the system under consideration is scanned or fragmentary. Bakowski thus proposed a systematic methodological approach to the study of the evolution of technical systems, which goes beyond previous approaches and demonstrates the practical performance um, <coughs> of this approach in a number of examples. The aim of our work is to prepare this methodological approach for a semantic web formalization. With regard to general considerations of ontology modeling, we limit ourselves to a formalization of the taxonomy, the basic tree as evolution tree ontology, and show how this can be used in the formalized representation of special evolution trees. Each basic pattern and modification subpatterns is represented by a special URI. As in this uh, example here, this is the, in, in such an URI. This is a globally unique textual representation, a reference to an individual artifact or concept. They can be recognized by a prefix separated by a colon as here, whereby the prefix TC refers to an established term from the TRITS context under consideration. Conceptual relations between these patterns and subpatterns are modeled using different, different uh, uh, WOM specific predicates with the OD prefix. 
For example, the segmentation pattern as a this slide is represented by the, this URI segmentation pattern and has the code displayed on this slide here. Um, in the given example, the segmentation pattern is a subconcept of the more general basic evolution pattern and different modification patterns like liquid or so here are also formalized in the same way. The basic evolution pattern, segmentation pattern and liquid are in clear general special relations since every segmentation pattern is a basic evolution pattern and every liquid pattern is a segmentation pattern. This is not in all situations such easy. Different to Spakovsky, certain subpatterns as flat surface and cylindrical surface of the generic uh, geometrical evolution pattern are not put in a mutual subconcept relation in our modeling, even if transformations in both directions appear uh, since uh, transformations in both directions appear in specific examples. Some modern monitors use curved displays instead of flat ones on the one side, but whereas older CRT displays have cylindrical surfaces, but due to manufacturing constraints, but using better glass, newer CRT displays have a flat surface. <clears throat> well, yeah, okay. Um, our central task is to model the nodes and edges of a given evolution tree of a class of general technical systems in RDF as textual representation. The full graphical representation of that evolution tree as an edge mark graph can be reconstructed from the, the textual representation in the usual way. And actually the two representation forms as RDF and as graph are equivalent. The interaction between a special class of technical systems and the basic constructs of the evolution tree ontology is explained on this slide using code from the class of technical systems display development. An edge is the evolution in the evolution graph of a class of technical systems has the typical shape of an RDF sequence as given here in this uh, three, three parts sentence. <clears throat> It uses the prefix X since the URIs refer to the model of a special class of technical systems and not to the notions of the ontology. This sentence addresses the development from TV with large pixels to TV with medium pixels that have a better performance in brightness and sharpness of images. The code of these two nodes is not presented here. We only note that the introduced URIs have nothing directly to do with the semantics of the represented technical system, except that following the modeling recommendations of Semantic Web, speaking names are used. To the RDF predicate, decrease pixel size uh, is here. It is um, for further information is attached. It instantiates the segmentation pattern in a special way. Scott's label and definition describe the transformation in the class of technical systems in more detail. And uh, you uh, use this pattern, refers to the pattern from the evolution tree ontology that was applied in this, in, in, in this transformation. Spagowski emphasizes that the construction of an evolution tree is mostly an iterative process in the course of which goal, elementary technical function, scope, and degree of abstraction of modeling the class of technical systems are gradually refined. Our tools for formal description support this iterative process as new objects can easily be added uh, as nodes and transformation steps can be added to or modified as edge descriptions. With the description elements presented so far, some of Spakovsky's more advanced concepts cannot yet be adequately represented. This is especially the case for the concepts trunk and branch of a tree of a class of technical systems, which however, remain work not only from a graph theoretical perspective. The concept trunk and root attempt to address the development in the class of technical systems from simpler to more complex forms, which is mainly oriented towards an unfolding of the elementary technical function 
and associated with the basic patterns one to four. However, since the modification sequences of each basic pattern define branches in the tree, even in such a linear context, it is unclear which of these branches is the trunk. In the evolution tree ontology, a language element can easily be added that identifies transformation edges as belonging to the trunk. However, it is not clear that this results in a linear rather than a branch structure. However, this is a general conceptual problem. The basic constructs only guarantee that the evolution is described by a directed graph. Even the property that the emerging graph is acyclic requires additional preconditions. An acyclic graph is characterized by the fact that its nodes can be placed in a linear order that coincides with the edge directions. This can be achieved, for example, assigning timestamps to the objects. But this poses restrictions on the abstraction principle applied in the constitution process on the objects of the class of technical systems. Hence, our modeling is nothing more than a first approach to a complex conceptual challenge. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Ansgert. And um, now we look at the audience. Uh, okay, there, is, there are questions coming in. So Hans Gert, Hans Gert, I'm not clear who yeah, and how I would benefit from your work. Um, what I'm doing, <laughs> more or less, Joshi, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person who is, um, who tries to understand and uh, learn a treats for about, uh, say, four years. And all what we did is uh, learn three streets concepts and what we did within the, within the WUM project to um, write down all that we learned in, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a semantic web form. So um, this semantic web form, uh, the, the, all this material is available on GitHub in, um, in, in public domain, so um, mainly um, other people can join these four. So far, no one joined it, but uh, we are trying to um, to put this in the in certain direction. This ontology force um, uh, um, lead to the problem that one has to clarify concepts very consistently because. Um, you can have some weak definitions of concepts uh, and you, you can in the everyday uh, life work with weak definitions of concepts. But if you try to develop or to model such uh, conceptual systems, you have to be more precisely. And this is more or less that what we are doing. Um, I'm writing papers about this. What, I'm, uh, what is my opinion to several points? I just in this ex in this. Um, presentation gave some <clears throat> my findings about evolution of technical systems within it. So maybe you, you agree or disagree with this so on, but uh, more or less we have here three examples in this. I only presented part of this. We have three examples here. Um, um, one, uh, two from the book of Spakovsky, a third from uh, the book of uh, um, Kolze Suchkov. Um, and uh, more or less, we develop this conceptual systems. We have applications of this uh, that prove more or less that it is so somehow is soundy. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, okay, thank you. Yerji, do you have anything to comment on this? Okay, uh, well, uh, there are probably my question mm, because you, I know that you are aware of the project on trees ontology where I was engaged uh, partly in the past, where there is an um, attempt to establish 
<clears throat> all sorts of connections, uh, horizontal connections between um, trees concepts, yeah, to trees, uh, especially which are provided in the trees glossary. So to, 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 to find out which are connected with part of, which connected with a, is a kind of, yes, and um, associative connections. So this is a sort of ontology they are continuing to build, you know, <clears throat> and it's um, growing. They also present uh, some new some papers on it. How would you compare, let's say, two approaches, your approach to ontology building and what, uh, well, we or they do, because I'm not part of this project anymore. What are, what are the most important differences, what, what I would like? Um, you probably have, uh, for, uh, I, I will give a talk about these connections at Ritz Future Conference. Uh, but uh, there are links already in the WUM, uh, my WUM blog uh, on the slides of this, of this uh, talk. Shortly about this, I uh, follow this uh, efforts uh, for two or three years very carefully. And uh, the TRITS Developer Summit Ontology Project has several uh, uh, disadvantages. Uh, they are working very hard and they have very good results, but the presentation of their results, so it is more or less um, also say no, um, that I'm working on this also. It's, uh, it's, there is no contact with me at all. And uh, the main problem is that they do not use um, strongly semantic concepts as is the standard nowadays uh, in, in semantic technologies. For example, sparkle endpoints, URIs, and so on. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what we did within the WOM project is to remodel parts of the TRITS Developer Summit ontology findings in such a format. And you find many of these things uh, in our uh, GitHub pages. For example, also your, um, your glossary. Um, you promoted this in a machine readable form and we transformed it in this, in this um, in, in this RDF format, we have other glossaries, the VDE glossary, we have Matvienko's glossary, we have a glossary of uh, the Thesaurus at the Altschola website, and the RDF um, uh, tools allow to, uh, combine, to put this into a combined glossary, um, keeping the provenance of different definitions of the same term. And for example, this is one of our, but this, this is not a, not a comparison or what is the difference, but it is more or less um, in, in add on, uh, on these efforts uh, that people do in the TRITS Developer Summit um, the ontology project. The presentation here about the evolution, um, uh, evolution trees uh, is in the same spirit, but of course, it, just this area was not yet covered by the Trist Developer Summit uh, people. So it is more or less uh, uh, an independent uh, third party um, contribution to all these developments uh, and so on. So I think there are as many, there could be many synergetic, um, uh, uh, synergetics but uh, not yet, so not yet um, at the moment, because more or less my efforts are not very recognized so far. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, th th there was a question uh, from the audience so that it would be if uh, I would unmute microphones. Actually, you can unmute your microphone. So let us, uh, you can do it yourself. So let us do if you answer a question and there is, and let's say, uh, a sort of a one step of discussion more. Do not hesitate, switch on your microphone and speak, okay? Right. Um, okay, there was something more in the chat. I oh, know it's to me directly. Okay, there was a direct message from someone, I don't know who. The, the visitor, 3.09, <laughs> ask me that question, but I think it's uh, to the hands here. I, I don't know about it, no. Okay, I just answered to the direct message. Okay, anyone else? Um, uh, there are any questions? Ah, oh, Adi, <laughs> hello, Adi. Adi, it was a question to me or, or to Hans Hert? <laughs> because 
I definitely doubt. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, any more questions? Even question, no questions. Answer. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we. I also must say that uh, uh, bringing all this uh, formal stuff, and especially which requires requires um, a certain connections, certain improvements, a certain refinings, which is very good for trees because trees is extremely heterogeneous at this moment. Different versions, different authors, different tools. The same tool, the title is the same, but there are different versions. It makes it a little bit difficult for the audience, especially to step in.